morning. It's good to be with you this morning on Father's Day. I'm Ty Montel, your church lay leader, and I've also incorporated in this service my, my grandsons, my granddaughter, and Joanne. I would hope that you enjoy the service as we put it together today. And one thing that I'd like to announce is that we have a new pastor coming on board with us here at First United Methodist Church of Safford. She will be on board with us on the 23rd. There's going to be a little break in between that. And she, her first service that she will preach will be on July the 4th, July the 5th. Anyway, the first weekend of July will be her first day on the pulpit. Before that happens, though, we're going to plan a little bit of celebration, maybe a drive-by celebration like we did with Pastor Mary. We're not sure yet, but we will keep you informed. I will inform you by the church's announcements through Heidi, and I will also keep you informed with any videos that I can make. So keep an eye on the church website and also the Facebook page. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we start this service this morning. Thank you for all of your patronage.
called to worship in the day when so many men are absent we cherish the love of our fathers thank god for fathers who comfort and encourage thank god for fathers who build character and inspire us to greatness thank god for fathers who teach us morality and model decently thank god for fathers who lovingly convince boys to become men Thank God for brave fathers who have the courage to resist being absent. Lord, on this Father's Day, may we encourage more men in our community to pick up the mantle of fatherhood. Opening prayer. O oh Lord our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts on us than we are to seek them, are and are willing to give them more than we desire or deserve. Help us to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that door of your mercy may be open to us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Psalm for the Day, Psalms 86, the New International Version. A prayer of David. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts you in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord, and listen to my cry for mercy. When I am distressed, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare to yours. All nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be ashamed. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me.
Today's gospel reading is Matthew 10, verses 24 through 39, the New International Version Bible. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. Is it enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters? If the head of the household has been called visible, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges, acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be his members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The next one is from Genesis 21, verses 8 through 21. Hagar and Ishmael sent away. A child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance of my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you because it is also through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent off her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Bathsheba. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father's Day. Father's Day can mean a lot of different things to different people. To one person, it can be the greatest of moments and of memories. To the next person, it might be a sad day. It might be that they lost their father in a confrontation overseas or as simple as someone who's decided that they could not be a father. I've heard of men that for one reason or another felt being a father was too big of a position for them. There are those that feel they cannot live up to the expectations. The thought of failure for some men is more than they can handle. It is this time in their life that those of us who are fathers must step forward and encourage these young men to take on the role of a father. We also must be examples in all aspects of our lives. We must walk the walk that Jesus walks. walked. It is our duty as fathers to pass on the love and respect that these young men need to become fathers. 
a father like our father in heaven. I myself became a father at a very young age. I was 19 years old and Joanne was 18. We had our first child when I was 20, and that was over 45 years ago. Looking back on that, I know that God was with us every step of the way. Even though at the time I had not chosen God as my Father in heaven. So how does that have anything today to do with today's scripture? Let us look at Genesis 21, verses 8 through 21 that was read earlier. Abraham and Sarah are celebrating their son Isaac has been weaned. Sarah catches a look of the slave Hagar, who has had a son from Abraham. Sarah is upset. She tells Abraham that she doesn't want the slave around her. She tells him to get rid of Hagar. I can't even imagine how Abraham felt. It doesn't say it in the Bible. I imagine Abraham went to bed with a heavy heart. God said to Abraham, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to what Sarah tells you. Because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation. Also because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and sent, off, sent her off with the boy. Imagine how Abraham must have felt. But he trusted God. He knew that because of his prior experience with God, he never questioned God. Abraham knew that God would do whatever God told him. God had been good to Abraham. That is evident throughout the Bible. How would you feel if you had a son or a young lady and you were told to send the boy out into the desert? Would you have enough faith in God? If God told you to go ahead and do that? As a father, I do not know that I could have that much faith. I don't know that my faith is that strong. I know that Abraham had talked to God before and that God had come true with what he had told Abraham. Those things would make it easier for a person to believe and to do things that God tells us or told him. So how does that with, relate with today? As, I'm, as I am thinking about the sermon, reading the scriptures, we have our grandchildren here with us this week. I could hear them playing in one of the back rooms. Their laughter made me remember when our children were young. Then I think of the prayer that we read about thanking God for fathers. Fathers who comfort and encourage about thanking God for fathers who build character and inspire us. We thank God for children, I mean for fathers who have morally and model decency. We thank God for our fathers who lovingly convince boys to become men. We thank God for brave fathers who have the courage to resist being absent. I also know that there are fathers that are absent. Children still grow up to become adults. It is these children that we must, as Christians, keep in our hearts and in our minds. As a person of God, we must look to our fathers in heaven to find strength and knowledge to help children who are less fortunate, who may not have a father or a mother. We must also encourage others to take that step. All children need the love of fathers and mothers. I hear on the news tonight that the COVID virus in Arizona is again the highest in the nation. We must remember that we have a life to live also. We must remain diligent in our efforts to stay safe. But we must also remember our mental health as well. In the beginning of spring, we see the earth responding to the change in seasons. Here, here in Arizona, we feel the heat start to rise. 
We hear the children riding their bikes and laughing as others walk by with their parents. We made a trip up on the mountain this week. It was pure heaven. How can you not think of our Father in heaven when you see the aspens flicker their leaves in the breeze or you feel the cool breeze as it sways through the, the pine leaves, pine cones? We were fortunate enough to see a deer and a wild turkey hen. Joanne and I have three of our grandchildren with us, and it gives me a perfect time to reinforce God's presence with us as we see the beauty that our Father in Heaven has given us. We are still staying safe and social distancing, and I wonder as I sit on the shore of the lake what their world will be in the next 20 to 30 years. How will we today set up the base for what is left to them? Our grandchildren have asked the hard questions. How will this turn out? I can only respond with the truth that God is with us today and for eternity. Is this a warning from God or is it something we have brought on us by our own free will? Whatever it is, I rest assured that God will not forsake those that he loves. Verse 20, 29 of Matthew 10 starts, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside our Father's care. And even the very hairs of our head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. God is with us, and he will be with us as we deal with this virus. We must do our part. We are to stay safe, and always we must lift up our prayers and thanks to God, our Father in heaven. Today is Father's Day, but we must acknowledge the struggle. Both of those who have done more damage than healing as fathers and those who experience a father's bring only memories of pain and rejection. Why would I mention that on a day of celebration? Because those stories deserve to be heard. Those stories are stories of truth that need to be heard, need to be acknowledged. Today is Father's Day, yet we cannot forget the reason we are here, to come together in worship of Jesus Christ the call placed on our existence as disciples is for the transformation of the world. We are asking the Spirit to open our eyes, our hearts to the voices, the voices of truth that God sends us. We must be diligent to those voices and listen for Him. We are called today to be listening to the voices of injustice, that is happening all around us. Those cries for justice, they cry out for all people, people who have done an injustice. We must stand up for all people. All people are of worth. Amen. Will you please join us in the intercessory prayer? For our Father, who has given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may be given hope and their family and friends support and console them. We, we pray, pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For men through without children of their own, who, like fathers, have nurtured and cared for us. We pray, we pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be the source of strength, 
who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families. We pray to the Lord. God, God our, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made, you made all things. things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to remind people that the church is still alive. Our church will be welcoming a new pastor shortly. She will be with us on the 23rd. We are looking forward to being with her. That will be a time when their, their furniture will be delivered. So we ask that you give them a little bit of space on that day. And we will, we will be planning a celebration for them and that we'll be getting with all of you very shortly. We ask that you support the church in, with your tithes and your offerings this week as you move forward. pray. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you have made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant we their sons and daughters that we might honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.